You remember the scripture said, stir up the gift that's in you. For we've not been given the spirit of fear. If it didn't come from God, I'm not going to receive it. Amen. What have we been given? Power. Uh, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's, let, let's, let's, let's camp on power here for a minute. Whoa, yeah. You got the power to get rid of it, right? The spirit of power. Love. And of a sound mind, a fear-filled mind, not a sound mind. Well, while we're talking about a sound mind, you know you have to have a sound brain to, to use it. People don't lose their mind. They lose function of their brain. You can't lose your mind. That comes as a shock to a lot of people. When your body dies, your mind will still be intact. Just thought I'd <laughs> throw that out there. <laughs> so if you're having trouble in memory and all that kind of thing, that's, that's not your mind. You're not losing your mind. It's your brain that's not working right. Amen. And there's healing for that. Amen. I know I'm exercising it right now. Uh, there's something about, you know, getting up 80, 81. You need to start doing that. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. All right. Now, let's, let's go back and take a look at this again. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, is walking about seeking whom he may devour. He's not going to let you alone about this. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. You're not a special case. You're not the first one this ever happened to, and don't let the devil tell you that, and, and don't be ashamed of it. Amen. Deal with it, praise God. And then give your testimony about it. Hallelujah. Because uh, other people are, are having to fight this same battle. Now, this is so big. But the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, make you perfect or develop you and mature you, <laughs> establish, strengthen, and settle you. That's talking about that care situation. You, you just stay with Jesus and, and, and keep that care rolled over on him, and you just keep resisting the devil, just keep slamming it into him, and just keep pushing back, just keep pushing back, just keep resisting, praise God. That's suffering. That is suffering. It's not the suffering of sickness and disease. There's no, nowhere in the Bible says a Christian ought to suffer sickness and disease. But everywhere it says a Christian suffer. What is it we suffer? There's two parts of this. One, we, it is demanded of us that whatever Jesus bore on the cross we resist it with everything we have. We never lay down and say, well, come on, sickness, I was expecting you anyway. No, we don't. No. He bore our sins, we resist sin. He bore our sickness, we resist sickness with all of our being. He bore our poverty, we resist poverty. And we do those things that the scripture tells us to do about it. We tithe, we sow, we do the, and we do it joyfully. Praise God, whether we, what I got to be joyful about? You're breathing, Jack. Now, come on. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> glory, 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 glory. That resistance, brother, I'm telling you, 
But the scripture is telling us, you just stay with it. And there, that your day is coming. He's, he's exalting you. He's exalting you. He's exalting you. I mean, every punch you throw, he's exalting you. Every punch you throw, he's exalting. You don't see it in the spirit, but all oh, the devil feels it. I mean, you're just laying it into him. You're just laying it into him. And there are situations that you think you failed when heaven has it recorded that you were victorious because you didn't give up but you didn't have any idea the forces that were arrayed against you. You didn't see it in the spirit. God saw what was up against you. God saw the way the devil was hammering you. And they said, well, why did he do something about it? Uh, sweetheart, Jesus went to the cross. That's doing something about it. You understand? He has equipped and given us the tool and the hardware to do it. But we have to get stronger, not weaker, as the battle goes on. Amen. Now, here's the key, a clue. <laughs> Don't major on the bad stuff. Find something to shout about. 2004. Sunday morning after the Saturday night service at uh, Southwest Believers Convention. I got up that morning and it had been a, a very, it was, it was a, a very productive convention, but it, it, in the spirit, very difficult. It, it, was, whew, it was a battle royal <laughs> from the start to the finish, but nevertheless, we came out victoriously. And I'm just... I just completely just finished, you know. And I got up and went in the shower and turned that hot shower on. I'm just standing there letting it run over me. And when I, when I walked in the, the shower stall, I, I took my, my washcloth off the rack and just threw it in there. But instead of it going where I threw it, it landed over there in the corner. Well, I didn't pay attention to it. No, I just went in there and I'm standing there in the, under that hot shower. Just, oh, Jesus, thank you. I did this and I got about this far. Oh, I had a, I had a disc explode in my back and the MRI showed that it exploded with such force that the stuff inside that disc shot up my, my spine. And I, I couldn't walk. I fell on the floor and crawled out of that shower. Oh, dear Lord, it's hurt. Now I won't go through all the things that, that, that uh, but in the process of time, I want you to know that left leg was hurting so bad. I just, oh man, it, it was just terrible. This was some days later. And um, I got out in the backyard and it struck me, the right leg not hurting. Let's major on that. Let's talk about the right one. I'd heard, I'd heard Keith Moore talking about that. He said, find a part in your body that's not hurting and major on it. <laughs> now, I got two heating pads and, and took, the, took the, the, the sash off of two of my, my robe, my bathrobe, and, and tied those heating pads on that left leg and turned them up as hot as they'd go. <laughs> You get one hurt worse than the other one. It has, it, I don't know, somehow or another, it seemed to me like that would help. <laughs> well, it did, you know, because I'm hurting from one or the other. But there's a difference between that heat hurting and that nerve hurting. So anyhow, I'm sitting out there. I got my leg jacked up sitting on, on this bench. And, I'm, and I'm, I found out that if I'd shout and praise God, that pain would subside. And I'm shouting, glory to God, glory to God. 
I thank you for the blue sky. I thank you for the grass in my yard. I thank you for these wonderful trees. Oh, these are wonderful trees. I thank you for the birds that are flying by. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. And I'd relax a little bit, and here it'd come again. <laughs> Praise. 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 Well, I want you to know, and I, <clears throat> I had a lot of pain over the years. Amen. I'm not going to quit. I don't have time to quit. I would like very much to quit. You understand? But if I quit, it's worse. That's like thinking suicide is an answer. Hey, it ain't over. That's just the beginning of something a whole lot bigger. Amen. And just stood on the Word of God and had a lot of good help along the way. Amen. Hallelujah. And wouldn't quit. And the Lord just kept revealing things to me. Kept, I mean, man, I mean, <laughs> it, it seemed to me like he put me through the Holy Ghost car wash about every few minutes. <laughs> it was <laughs> unpeeling all kinds of stuff, you know. Oh, yeah. And he's still doing it. Thank God. But on the 11th day of August, glory to God, I woke up pain-free and I haven't had any pain since. Hallelujah! But it's right here. It's right here. That's what this Syrophoenician woman was doing. Now, the second part of that suffering is releasing our will, ideas, and authority over our own lives to Jesus of Nazareth. And to be able to stand before him and say, I am right where I'm supposed to be. <coughs> and sometimes that can get really rough because you're all settled in and you've been doing it this way all these years and had, uh, you know, somewhat of success about it. And you get up one morning and find out the whole mess was out of the will of God. <laughs> and you think, what? Why didn't you tell me? Boy, I've been telling you every day. <laughs> Why didn't you listen? Is the, Why didn't I listen? That's the correct question. Thank God for His grace. And being willing to just throw yourself over on His mercy and say, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your grace and your goodness. Now help me get back on course here. An off-course problem spiritually is not all that different from an off-course problem in navigation. If, 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 if I'm heading from point A to point B and I don't, I don't correct my track and I begin to drift, I'm not, I'm not checking the winds. I'm not paying any attention to my heading. I'm just, you know, just, just wallering through the sky instead of flying. I don't have to be off all that much. But the longer I stay there on that bad heading, the further off course I am. You see that? And you, you've spent about 20 years doing that, and you in a mess and didn't even know it or you knew you was in a mess, you didn't know why. This is where you have to break down and yield, brother, and cast all of that direction care over on him and say, I repent, where do I go from here? Now, let's say my course line, I'm, I'm on a track from here to that pair of red shoes, right there. Hold that leg up there now where I can get a good look at it. <laughs> well, 
okay, I'll track to your red hair. I, that, you, it's sticking up there where I can see it. <laughs> now, see, I, I'm tracking, but I got the, the devil blowing wind at me this way. I'm still holding the same, the same heading that I had. Not the same course, but the same heading. Let's say I'm, I'll just pick a heading. Say I'm, I'm, I'm holding um, 090 due east. I'm going due east and I'm headed there, but I've blown off. And I get out here and, and I'll look around. Things don't look right here. And I look around. Oh my goodness. And now, now let's say, what, Steve? I'm, I'm 120 miles off course. Now, now I'm, now I'm concerned about my fuel. I'm, am I going to have enough fuel to fly 120 miles to get back on this course and then finish the rest of the trip? No, that's not what I'm going to do. I'm over here. I'm not going to go over here and then over there. I'm going to go over there because that's my proper destination. Now, how am I going to figure out my course? This is an off course problem. How am I going to figure out my course to go direct to my destination or direct to my waypoint without having to go back over there and get on that original track. Now, here's the way you do it. I repent <laughs> for missing it. Glory to God. I repent. I'm, I repent for not listening to you. And in the name of Jesus, thy will be done. Amen. That fixed it. Thy will be done. So what's he going to do? He's going to guide me right back over there. I, I was in a mess one time and I was crying out to God. I said, oh God, what am I going to do now? I've messed this thing up so bad. And now I'm carrying the care of having missed God as if I was the only one that ever did. <laughs> well, I don't want to be carrying that care too. I said, Lord, what will I do? And I heard him right in here just as plain. He said, Kenneth, do you believe I can take you from where you are right now right back into my will? I said, I certainly do. He said, then quit worrying about it. Roll all the care of it over on me and you just start confessing your will be done, Lord, every time you think about it. And he said, I'll lead you out of that mess. And he did. <laughs> Glory to God. He fixed it for me. Amen. So that is true humility. Humbling yourself before God by casting all your care over on Him. And then the suffering that comes because of it. Fight the good fight of faith. Glory to God. And don't ever let the devil see you sweat. The tougher it gets, the bigger your smile gets. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Look at yourself in the mirror every morning. Go through your healing scriptures. I mean, the minute you get up and you walk in that, that bathroom, you look in that mirror and you start going over your healing scriptures, looking yourself right in the eye. Surely he bore my griefs and sicknesses. He bore my sorrows and pains. Amen. Amen. And if the situation you're in, he has taken my care. And I don't have a care today. I refuse to touch a care. I am a carefree man. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because Jesus is my caretaker. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. Now then, now then, she humbled herself before him. She could not be offended. She could not be offended. 
Now, what you and I don't know is the steps that Jesus took and the way that way he dealt with her. He dealt with her specifically in a way that that would get her faith up and out of her and get that girl delivered. He wasn't trying to keep her from getting delivered. He's trying to deliver her. See, we don't know the we don't know where her husband is. We don't know why the girl's demon possessed. We don't know all that. We don't know this woman's background any further than the fact we do know she had some contact with the Word. We do know she found uh, out enough to know He's the Messiah. But other than that, you know, we don't know much. But we always know this. Jesus is always trying to get your faith out of you. He's trying to get His hands on your faith because that's where the action is. Then you just give Him just a little, just a little sparkle of faith and He'll move on it. Hallelujah. Can you see, can you hear, can you hear how thrilled he was? And he said, woman, great is your faith. And for that saying, go on home, your baby's well. <laughs> That's what he was after all the time. Amen. Always remember that. He's always for you. Amen. Don't ever, ever, ever get offended at him. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.